This will be my look at just previewing the main event from UFC 274. Of course, Charles Oliveira versus Justin Gaethje. One of the things that I thought of when I was looking at this fight was duality. Duality as a concept, for me at least, is something that we subscribe to in order to understand c complex topics or issues, right? Dual, dual or competing ideas or concepts. They can they can help us balance out our perspective, balance out our thoughts or our plans. Like simplistically, can be represented, you know, by good and evil, love and hate, and peace and war. These are these are simple, general, generalized examples. But in many cases. Duality can actually help two things complement each other and make more sense. And, and prior to today's weigh-in situation, I thought Charles Oliveira and Justin Gaethje provided that for each other. I thought they complemented each other perfectly. And someone, one of those two, was going to be able to put an unbelievable stamp on their career. Now, Charles Oliveira is in the middle of an of a sick run that maybe is unprecedented even and I know that sounds difficult to say because of you know Khabib Nurmagomedov retired undefeated uh these are two absolutely great fighters Oliveira and Gaethje each of them has wins over dangerous guys and I'll talk a little bit about Oliveira's run later look both of them have beaten Tony Ferguson and Michael Chandler who are on the undercard Oliveira and Gaethje are so uniquely talented and so different as fighters Either one of them could beat each other in the first round tomorrow night. Either one of them. I think it's equally likely that Gaethje drops him and finishes him entirely. I mean, Gaethje touches everyone in the first round, except except Khabib, I guess. Although he did hit him with one strike, I thought that was pretty hard. But it's entirely possible, on the other side of the coin, that Oliveira finishes another turnaround, get, you know, gets hurt early, and then gets up off the stool to start round two, hurts Gaethje, and locks in a sub, finishes him in round two. I mean, either one of those cons, either one of those those manner of, of finishing the fight is po absolutely possible. It's really interesting to me, man. I was so excited about it. The weigh-in thing kind of puts a damper on it some for a lot of people. Both both of these guys lay claim to being like the modern day Rocky. They really do. Gaethje has been one of my favorite fighters for years. He came into the UFC, you know, obviously as a brawler, and it took that one and two start, you know, with two two. Losses by finish, I mean, nearly 0-3. Michael Johnson almost finished him before Gaethje, you know, demonstrated the ability to adjust and allowed himself to evolve. He gave us some unbelievable wars in those first three UFC fights, but he's continued to do so even as he's moved toward a more conservative, disciplined approach. His fight against Chandler, Michael Chandler, seven months ago was sick. Even though his strategy has evolved, it still fits right in there with those early UFC wars against Michael Johnson, Eddie Alvarez and, and Dustin Poirier. And look, if you haven't seen it, may, I'll try to put a link in the description. The the most unbelievable war that Justin Gaethje was in, the war of all wars, actually two of them, <laughs> was with a guy named Luis Palomino back in 2015. Two unbelievable fights. you got to check them out. It looked like Rocky III you know, against Clubber Lang, both of those fights. But to me, Oliveira is the true comeback king. And, and that's coming from someone who is a Justin Gaethje fan. I was a fan of Justin Gaethje before he came to the UFC. I have wanted him to win a UFC title. I still do, but I recognize that Charles Oliveira's career path and the way that he has won the title, he's the comeback king. And that's what makes today's happening so um, so difficult to imagine. You know, he's going to be stripped of the title. Apparently, it's going to happen. It's going to be announced in the cage as the fighters are being announced. I don't know. Is that information accurate? If there's anybody who knows better, you know, let me know in the comments section. So, from what I think I understand is they'll introduce Ga Gaethje first, I guess, and then Oliveira, because he was the champion, and then they're going to announce that Oliveira's been stripped right in the cage. Who who the hell is going to announce that? I mean, is Dana going to get in there and do that? Like, I'm a Dana White fan, I will be honest with you. I, I like him, I appreciate him, and, and I love the way he looks at things from a business standpoint, but, like, what's the point of announcing that, you know, right right before the fight? As Oliveira and Gaethje are standing there, I mean, it, it really makes it seem like Dana and them they, they didn't didn't want or never wanted Charles to be the lightweight champ. It's just crazy. Um, continuing with talking about Oliveira's career path, look, as I said, I've been a huge fan of Gaethje since he was wrecking people in the World Series of Fighting. When he came to the UFC in, in 2016, he was undefeated, right? I'm not sure if you guys remember that. I would want him to win a UFC title in his career. For a lot of reasons. His style, the way he approaches fighting, his power. His, he's got a simplistic approach. I mean, I mean, he's 
He uses his hands and he throws leg kicks. <laughs> that's that's about it. You know, and he's he's got a great wrestling pedigree, but he doesn't use it. Uh, one of the main reasons I really like Gaethje is, look, Gaethje and Ferguson gave uh, gave the world a beautiful performance in two, October 2020. As we, they, they were trying to, not just them, but the UFC was trying to bring the world back to some type of normalcy by hosting that of UFC 249 in Florida, you know, in October of 2020. Think of all the things we've been through since then. And, and Gaethje and Ferguson's performance, at least for one night, I thought, allowed so many of us to return to, you know, some level of normalcy, right? But I'll be honest, even though Gaethje's my favorite, and he's still my favorite active fighter, he really, really is, I'm telling you guys the truth, I have an affinity for seeing Charles Oliveira's current run continue. I have two competing dual perspectives on this. It's really not simple. I guess Oliveira missed weight once today by half a pound and then got an hour to go back and lose that half a pound. And I don't know, did he come back and not lose it, it sounds like? Who knows? I mean, there's rumors of a heavy scale. Daniel Cormier even talked about it, I think. And there were two other fights, I think, that have been marred by fighters missing weight. I think one of them is Cerrone and, and Joe Lozon. I, I love Oliver's comeback story. An amazing run. It can be used, um, you know, for people who do pay attention to MMA, it can be used to help people in times where they are down and where they're struggling with whatever they're doing in their professional life, personal life. You know, at, 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 when he entered the UFC, he was 20 years old. He's a phenom, a submission phenom, 20 years old, and he subs Darren Elkins. I think it was UFC Live, too. Now, just so you understand how long ago that was, if you're still listening, UFC Live 2, that card was headlined by John Jones. John, That John Jones, yeah. It's 2010. And, and at that time, John Jones hadn't won the UFC title yet. This the fight he had that that night against Vladimir uh, Matyshenko, I believe I believe so, was supposed to be his first real test after he destroyed Brandon Vera's face with an elbow from top position and his and his second fight in the UFC, you know, he dominated Stefan Bonner. The the night that Charles Oliveira entered the UFC, UFC Live 2. John Jones was 7 months away from beating Shogun Hua for the light heavyweight title. That's how long ago this was. So, and John Jones is out of the UFC at this point, possibly going to come back at heavyweight, whatever. But my point is, Charles Oliveira is 32 years old. He's now the UFC champion. That was a, that's a lifetime ago in terms of uh, high-level mixed martial arts. Now, there's guys who stick around longer than that. A couple of, four of them are fighting on this card, right? Don Cerrone, Joe Lozon, Shogun Hua. So those guys have been around a long time. But my point is, Oliveira came into the UFC and, and tested himself against the elite of the elite. He, he would have moments of greatness early on. Like I said, he subbed Darren Elkins. He subbed Efrain Escudero. If you don't know who he is, he was really highly touted when, when Oliveira took him out. That was Oliveira's second UFC fight. Then Oliveira goes like 8-8 eight and eight over the next like six, six and a half years. During that time, he's, he's finished by many, multiple guys. Cerrone finished him. Jim Miller finished him. Cub Swanson. He had that weird loss to Max Holiday before he got subbed back-to-back -back by Anthony Pettis and Ricardo Lamas, who's not a real sub guy. And if I remember correct, that fight was at featherweight between Oliveira and Lamas. Oliveira kind of went back and forth between featherweight at 145 and 155. And I thought Lamas and Oliveira's fight was a number one contender fight uh, at featherweight, but I could be wrong. Eventually, Oliveira returned to lightweight and subbed Will Brooks. And if you don't know who Will Brooks was, look it up. He was a former Bell Bell Bellator champ. Came over to the UFC. He had two wins on his resume over Michael Chandler. One of them by TKO at that point. He was considered the favorite over Oliveira. Oliveira subbed him. I think that was the turning point. Even though the next fight, Oliveira lost to Paul Felder. That was a KO loss. And that was, if you ask me, that was where the evolution was complete. Even though he lost. Because it clearly revealed to Charles Oliveira what he had to change. Now granted, his striking is vastly improved. Everyone talks about that. Joe Rogan will talk about it a shit ton tomorrow night, I'm sure. But what failed him in the Paul... If, you take, if, if he was to finish Paul Felder, and he dominated the first three minutes against Paul Felder, dominated him, took him down. He he took him down. He had him in a darse choke for over a minute. He had him in a mounted darse choke for like 20, 25 seconds. Joe, Joe Rogan's like, this is over. He had Felder in a standing rear naked as well. He, he gassed himself out, or at least you know he, he, he squeezed so much with his arms, he wore himself out. If you ask me, 
that revealed to Oliveira how he had to evolve, which was his cardio. Uh, he has incredible cardio now, and I think that is how he's able to take punishment in the first round, or early, maybe second round, and then recover and finish people because of his cardio. That night against Paul Felder, he dominated the first three minutes. Easily could have finished him, and should have. Eventually, in the second round, he ended up trapped against the cage. You may remember it if you've watched the fight. If not, go, go check it out. Felder ends up on top. Oliveira's exhausted after a, a, a failed takedown attempt. Felder is on top. It lands a vicious elbow strike. Hard elbow. Oliveira immediately taps while he's got Felder in his guard. Immediately. Herb Dean's standing right there. It took four or five more elbows before Herb finally stepped in. I don't think he saw Oliveira tapped. And and look, Oliveira still gets caught by strikes sometimes. That's, that's his MO. I've, I've mentioned that twice already. Get hurt early and survive. And then finish you in the second round. And at some point, I guess you say you got to say that that pattern is going to stop. Someone's going to finish him. Justin Gaethje might be that guy. Let's recap, though, the last four people that Charles Oliveira has beat. And you tell me if he can't beat Justin Gaethje. Four fights ago, he beat Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee is a monster at 155. He's a, I think he's a natural like 165 guy if there was a 165 division. I think Kevin Lee would fit perfectly into it. He'd probably have to still cut some to get there. But Kevin Lee's a monster for at least a round, maybe a round and a half, before he has a tendency to lose some steam since he was a bigger guy at lightweight, like I mentioned. The next fight, Charles Oliveira beats Tony Ferguson. Now, Ferguson had just suffered that brutal KO loss, or TKO loss, to Gaethje in October of, two, of 2020. Two months later, or two and a half months later, Charles Oliveira beats him by decision in a fight that I thought he dominated. The next two fights, which will be his third and fourth you know, win in a row. And, I mean, really, look, these four wins in a row might be the four. This might be the, the best four wins in a row in the history of the, of the UFC lightweight division. And I don't mean that in a negative way towards Khabib. I know he retired undefeated. But Charles Oliveira proceeds to get hurt badly by Chandler and Poirier in the next two fights. Survive and then overwhelm them. Finishing Chandler with a left hook in the second round and then subbing out Poirier in the third round. Charles Oliveira's heart can't be questioned. Can't. I think his striking is vastly improved. I think that's a huge part of the equation now. But his cardio is elite. And that's what makes today so confusing for me. Him missing weight even by a half pound. Those guys those guys weigh in twice before the official weigh in. So to me, that means he weighs. And, I, and, and you guys correct me in the comment section if you're still listening. Um, I know it's mostly a football channel, but I love MMA, and this is really fun for me to try to do. As I understand it, those guys weigh in twice. Before they get on the, the 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 scales, and their weight is announced to everyone, that's why he looked so surprised. I thought he, I thought I read that he was 155, 155, and then 155 and a half. Michael Chandler even came out and like tweeted about it, kind of like very sympathetic. Uh, it's it's really difficult for me to understand. I think it's kind of harsh for them to take his title, but if that's the precedent that's already been set in some other situation, then okay, that's fine. I'm not aware of that 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 precedent has been set. Um, you know, again, Oliveira's striking improved, elite grappling, unbelievable grappling, and subs. I think it's the cardio that makes him a different thing altogether now. And I think because of that, if Justin Gaethje's coaches are smart, he's got to come in with that conservative game plan that he had against, like, Tony Ferguson. Now, we saw a huge difference in him against Ferguson. You know, he was kind of looking to counter. Justin Gaethje was a, a faster more explosive athlete than Ferguson, and he's a faster, more explosive athlete than Charles Oliveira as well. And what I mean by that is like the fast twitch muscle fibers, explosive power. He has the advantage over Oliveira the same way he had it over Ferguson. And Justin can say all he wants that Charles is still the same fighter, you know, as that 8-8 eight eight run from like 2010 to 2017. But that's just not true. It's just not true at this point. Oliveira's cardio and his ability to survive now is is on par and maybe ex and maybe exceeds his improved striking. The one problem I think I see though is his head. Oliver's head is too stationary. That could be a real issue. Gaethje will hit you. He will find you. He's a great athlete. He's got great timing. He's very precise. Um, say what you want about Gaethje. You know he doesn't use his wrestling, which is you know silly. He wants to go to war too often. You know uh, he talks about 
all those things about dying in the ring and, and all these things he's willing to die for this. Gacy has incredible willpower, in, incredible strength. His strikes are all um, amazing, and he will hit you. He's hurt everyone he's fought except for Khabib. So having said all that, uh, and I could be way wrong here. Here's my prediction. Uh, I think there's something different about Charles Oliveira striking that's not that was not there with Tony Ferguson. Oliveira has a lethal left hook, and his straight punches are very quick, and he has the length advantage. I think he's willing to use it. I think he can touch Gaethje on the way out or the way in. I think Oliveira's striking is versatile, um, not as unpredictable as Ferguson's. I keep comparing him to Ferguson because I think that power-wise, they're the same type of, of guy, meaning they're more volume-based. They're not going to you know knock you out one punch, even though Oliveira has hurt people, as has been documented by myself here in this video tonight. And I have no doubt that Gaethje's going to land some powerful left hooks. But I'm going to go out on a whim here with my prediction. Uh, this is a little bit against my better instincts. Because I will admit, I think it's entirely possible that Gaethje seriously hurts Oliveira early. Because he's so quick, so athletic, and he possesses immense power. And, and I do, in fact, want Justin Gaethje to win a UFC title. I'll be okay with either guy winning as, as a fan. I will be. I think Gaethje's an amazing fighter, great story. He's one of my favorites, if not my favorite active fighter in the UFC. Anderson Silva's no longer an active mixed martial arts fighter, so he's, you know, he's my favorite fighter of all time by far. But I think Gaethje could have some issues with Oliveira's length and output. output. Oliveira will fire back. And this is just a wild-ass guess here because I think either one of them can hurt the other guy early and set up a finish. I'm going to pick Oliveira by KO slash sub. And what I mean by that is this. Gaethje's going to land a few early leg kicks in round one. I think Oliveira braces on one of them. And when I say braces, I mean doesn't check it, just braces it. And lands like an offbeat counter left hook with Gaethje's lead right hand down, which he sometimes does on his leg kicks. I'm talking about Gaethje. I'm talking about his, his rear leg kick, not, not with his left, because he's an he's a orthodox right-handed fighter. Gaethje's right hand sometimes is down when he throws his leg kicks. And I think that there'll be like a, a slightly late offbeat left hook by Oliveira that catches him. And he gets to finish. And that'll just make the lightweight division an absolutely beautiful shamble for at least a few more months because apparently Oliveira can't be the champion. His story is just so compelling to me. So, I mean, both of their stories are, like I said. But So maybe that's where my thought process is coming from. I'm betraying my fandom of Gaethje and predicting a, a finish for Charles Oliveira. It's entirely possible Gaethje lands a few leg kicks and or faints something and sets up a bomb that takes Oliveira out. And then solves this whole mess for Dana White in the UFC, right? Get rid of Charles Oliveira in terms of, you know, a champion right now. But I have to settle on something. So I choose Oliveira by, by really by sub after really hurting Justin with a left hook. Like I said, sort of offbeat. I don't mean a check hook. I mean like a left hook that's, that's a little bit later than we would expect it. Something that lands after Gaethje enters and gets off a strike first. So, so a little bit of a counter, but something that's a little offbeat. Um, and, th and then after Hurt and Justin takes it to the ground and chokes out a dazed Gaethje. Um, let's, say, let's say three and a half, four minutes into round one. That's my guess. Let me know what your predictions are for this fight or for the what I think is an amazing undercard. Now, is it amazing that you know, the bottom two fights four and five in terms of you know, titles, title fight situations? No. But Ferguson Chandler is going to be wild. Rose Nama Namajunas getting an opportunity to fight against, against Carla Esparza. Look, Esparza owns a sub win over Rose. Donald Cerrone gets a retirement fight, we hope, against Joe Lozon, who sh should have retired too. And, and, and mixed in there is one of the most unbelievable matchups that I think I've ever seen in modern MMA. Eight years ago, Shogun, Shogun Hua, I'm American, but I try to say it correctly. You know, he's, if you don't know, Shogun Hua, pride star, came over to the UFC, had an unbelievable loss to Forrest Griffin. Um, eventually, you know, difficult decision lost to Lyoto Machida, who was champ. Then KOs Machida in 2010. Looks like he's going to dominate. And then John Jones just comes out of nowhere and obliterates him, obliterates everybody. Eight years ago, Shogun was still trying to come back from that situation, losing the title to Jones. And he gets KO'd by a somewhat unknown, you know, athletic, um, powerful guy named Ovin St. Pru. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that, Ovin's OSP, Ovin St. Pru is a former D1 football player at Tennessee. Played DN and, and outside linebacker. I think he played some inside linebacker. He stopped Shogun with an unbelievable left hook 
eight years ago, really shocking because the class of fighters that Shogun had been in with was way higher than OSP had ever faced. Um, that's the fifth fight. I mean, I think it's a great card. You know, I, if I keep talking long enough, I'll talk myself into picking Gaethje, so I need to shut up. Uh, you guys let me know what you think of my breakdown in the comments section and who you're picking in the main event. I appreciate, you know, you guys checking out the content that's MMA related. Please, you know, comment on the video if you appreciate it or if you think there's anything that, you know, I could do better in terms of MMA content. It's been draft season in the NFL, so this is very late uh, being pushed out by me. Can't wait to watch the fights tomorrow night on Saturday. Let me know how you guys are watching fights. Some of us that are in my um, NFL-related Discord, we get up in the Discord and, and watch the fights and, and talk about them, you know, as they're coming, as they're happening. Appreciate you guys checking out the content.